each time I make a Raptor Launcher video, I'm inevitably asked about how the machine works. It, seriously, it's ridiculous. I often get ten times the comments on those videos that I do on my other videos. Don't get me wrong, I like the comments. But, dear lord, I need to make this video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be explaining how Raptor Launchers work and all their little quirks and interesting bits. Keep in mind, this will not work on Bedrock Edition for the most part. Uh, and a lot of the time, Ravager Launchers won't work on servers. It's kind of a shame, honestly. Uh, it's because they have this, like, kind of anti-fly thing, which uh, makes them doesn't work, so that it doesn't work. So, first of all, how do they work? So basically, when a Ravager hits a shield, there's a 50% chance it'll go into this little stun animation. Right there, it shakes its head back and forth, and there are like little potion effects, and then it roars. And, yeah, and after a moment it lets out a roar. And when a Ravager lets out a roar, you get launched backward. The closer you are, the more you get launched back, for the most part. So what happens when you're really, really close to the Ravager? Well, back in 1.14, when this stuff was discovered by Simply Sark, it would launch you about 2,400 blocks. However, due to some updates to the game, this was changed. Uh, likely due to players accidentally getting launched off into the stratosphere when just doing a raid. So, yeah, so they made a new method. So if you stand super close to the Ravager, it will only launch you a bit. You actually have to stand a tiny bit farther from away, which unfortunately won't launch you as far as in 1.14, only about 650 blocks now, but it's still very useful. So, there's a very specific distance you have to stand away from the Ravager, and you kinda just have to get it through trial and error. You can use my designs to get the right distance if you want. The distance will be released as you travel backward at incredible speed, and then fall out of the sky. I am 99% sure that you travel so fast that you actually phase through walls for about 600 blocks. The speeds at which you travel in the nether are crazy, even crazier. So, say there's a friend's base that's 5,000 blocks away in the overworld. If you use a Ravager launcher in the nether, you can clear that distance in roughly 5 seconds and get all the way across a world in basically an instant. There was a huge problem, however, in my earlier designs where it would actually launch you at a slight angle. So, basically, this was the problem. So basically this is the problem. The method I was using to align the player, which is trapdoors right here, isn't perfect at all. Um, basically if we wanted to be perfectly aligned with the Ravager, this little number right here would have to be at exactly 0. .500, but if you use this, it's only at 0. .488, which means we're actually 0. .012 off. And that tiny difference means that you'll be fired diagonally about 40 blocks, which isn't great. So, basically, you have to be at the exact same number as the Ravager, and that number is usually 0. .500. Um, anyway, so, so how can we get this perfect distance from the Ravager? We need to figure out a way to align them perfectly. So, if you open up F3, you'll see three coordinates. The X, the Y, and the Z. The Y isn't really important for Ravager launchers, but... So, right now we're just going to focus on the X and the Z. One of these, either the X or the Z, is going to be sh the shooting coordinate, and the other is going to be the diagonal coordinate. Your shooting coordinate is the axis that you'll fly on. So, for example, if th my Ravager is here, then this will be the direction I'll be launched, and therefore the X value will be my shooting coordinate, because if I walk forward, that's the one that changes, majorly. And all therefore, my Z coordinate is going to be my diagonal coordinate. So... <sighs> Uh, 
The diagonal coordinate, on the other hand, is basically a modifier. It's how far you want to be launched diagonally, which sometimes can be useful, but usually you just want to be launched in a perfectly straight line. The problem is trying to find a way to align your character. Getting your character and Ravager to both equal 0 .500 on the diagonal coordinate is easier said than done. For the pl for the Ravager, it's actually really easy. Just get them in a minecart. You can see that if we sit in a minecart, look, we're at exactly 0 .500, which is perfect. Um, for the player, it's more complicated. I've only figured out two methods that reliably get the player there. The first solution is actually the same minecart. If we get out of this minecart, you'll see that we're put at exactly 0 .500, 0 .500, which is imperfect because that means you have to be standing in this very exact position to make the Ravager launcher work, which can be difficult. However, it could definitely have its uses. The other one is the more reliable one. So, if I take a block, this one's probably the easiest. Look at these seed pickles. So, you can see the edge here. There's three pixels until the edge of this block that the seed pickle isn't taken up. Now, if we take a boat and we ride into the seed pickle, we're at exactly 0 .500. Now, I found three methods, or three blocks, rather, that you can do this with. And those are a double C pickle, specifically a double. A single won't work, three won't work, four won't work. Only two. Uh, a chorus stem, that's actually surprisingly useful. And two sides of a turtle egg. Only two, for some reason. The other two are four pixels away. I believe it's, yeah. Look, this is four pixels away. But then the other two sides are both three pixels away, which doesn't make much sense. Anyway, these are the only three methods I've found that work with the boat, but I think this one has some promise. That could definitely work out. Now, what makes this even more useful is that when not standing on the ground, like kind of without a place to basically have the boat teleport you to, the boat will always teleport you to the exact center of the boat, which means if we're sitting at 0 .500 and we get out of the boat, oh, whoops, uh, I meant to do that, but if there, we have no places to stand on, if we have no adequate places to stand on, we'll just teleport into the middle of the boat, which means we'll still be at 0 .500. So, here are some other blocks that could be used for aligning. These are all basically by how large they are. So starting off, we have the trapdoor, 3 pixels wide, very useful. Stairs, 8 pixels wide, also quite useful. Iron bars and glass are 1 pixel farther, so 9 pixels. A chain, I'll get back to that one later. Fences and um, fences and fence fences and end rods are ten pixels, which is great. Lanterns and uh, flower pots are eleven pixels, which gives you, which is also great. Walls are twelve. Coarse plants, coarse stems, and two sides of the turtle egg are thirteen. Grindstones are fourteen. Chests are fifteen and a full block is 16, which basically means we have a lot of different choices on how to align the player, including this one, the chain. The chain is a shockingly special item block in Minecraft. It's really bizarre, honestly. So you may just be thinking, what sets it apart from the iron bar or the fence post. And that is, to my knowledge, the chain is the only block in Minecraft that has a half a pixel. Yeah, 
This is nine and a half pixels instead of nine or ten. Which means you can be very precise with the chain. And it means it's oddly useful because you can use it to align very precisely. The only problem is is that you can only really it, there are still prop times when it doesn't work basically but it's surprisingly useful when you're working in this general type of alignment. So here let me give you an example. So a well-known Ravager launcher design is the double end rod. I, this, I will say this also works with fences. The idea is the player stands the player stands here and then the Ravager would be like here-ish basically and the player would hold up their shield and the Ravager would launch them and they'd go flying. Or the Ravager would actually be pushed up against an end rod down here with like a minecart. <laughs> and this method works pretty well. But, say you wanted to get that a little bit closer. You could use the chains, which are very slightly smaller, and you'd be very slightly closer to the Ravager. Now I don't think this actually makes this particular design better, but I think you can see how it might be useful. Anyway, um, okay, there are also a couple of other things, like there's a trick you can do with the minecart. Minecart's actually very slightly smaller than a full block, which means that you can actually very slightly change the position of the Ravager by about 10 pixels each way, or by about 0 0.01 each way, which can be the difference between a great Ravager launcher and a basically useless one. Uh, it's surprisingly useful. Okay, so there we go. Now, as I was saying earlier, to kind of like with this design, to align with the shooting coordinate, what you're going to want to do is you want to get... This is kind of hard to show with Ravagers, uh, but basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get as close to the center, very close to the center of the Ravagers model, but not quite in the center of it. So very close, but not quite in the middle. And you'll see, you'll notice with all the designs I've shown in my videos, that the um, that the Ravager is basically straight underneath you. And that's what you want to do with these alignments. So you can use all of these blocks to help align you, and you know, the boat trick and all that stuff. And basically, the end result of this is you're going to want your Ravager to be very, very slightly farther away from you. Very, very slightly far away from you. So, let's say you do make a Ravager Launcher. What are some ways that you can use to increase the distance? Okay, so here's the first one. Being in the air while the Ravager roars actually launches you much farther. About, instead of going about 680 blocks, you go about 1,000, which is pretty a pretty large increase of about you know 250 blocks 220 blocks so that makes your overall nether travel distance from 5000 blocks to about 7700 and it also means you can kind of control the distance that you go thank you to jack adams for this and the holy grail is if you're holding an elytra here I'm going to have to do this one in creative mode because I don't have a Ravager launcher set up uh, right now. And this is going to require some pre precision. So you're just going to have to kind of imagine this with me here. So the idea is you walk up to the Ravager, you know, you get it into its dizzy state. You get in position, you turn around, do a 180 and you start flying. Now if you're sitting in the exact the exact right position from the Ravager, if you're standing in the exact perfect area, you go flying ridiculously far. So a normal Ravager launcher 
will get you about, you know, a thousand blocks. Pretty good. This thing can hypothetically launch you 10,000 blocks in less than a minute from one Ravager launcher. And that's the total launch. You get, in the initial launch, you get launched 5,000 blocks in the first three seconds. Now, I don't know a way to set this up. I don't know a way we can reliably get make this work, basically. I think we might be able to do something with, like, using the elytra and then going into the swimming state, you know, when you have an elytra on. That, that might work, or something, I don't know, but if we can figure out a way to use this reliably, this is kind of like the holy grail of Ravager launchers, and it could rival the Psycraft Ender Cannon. I don't have any ideas, but if any of you have any, please, please share them in the comments. But yeah, if you have any other ideas on how to make Ravager launchers better, please also leave them in the comments. If you hated the video, please leave a dislike and a comment on how I could do better making this vi these videos. But if you did like it, do whatever the heck you want. Goodbye!